Hello and welcome to The Nurse Station. I'm Maria Mowgli and today we are going to learn about rest and digest versus fight or flight. Also known as your autonomic nervous system and let me tell you I am not a biology teacher. I'm not an AMP teacher. I'm going to teach you what I think you need to know as a nurse. All right. So what symptoms are presented in each system and remember there it's involuntary. We have we don't even know we're doing it right. Fight or flight or the sympathetic nervous system is your response to any stressor. So that could be a very severe acute illness or you could be having anxiety, right? And this doesn't mimic this pattern every time. But if you have a good overall understanding of fight or flight as a whole and the symptoms your patients will present, it'll help you because any acute disease process, it's showing these symptoms. We just got to figure out and change the trigger, which I'll show you at the end. So fight or flight, your response to a stressor. Your primary neurotransmitters are norepinephrine and epinephrine is a part of this as well. But when you have a stressor, fight or flight is stimulated. And remember involuntary. So you are not purposely doing it. It just happens on its own versus rest and digest, also known as your parasympathetic nervous system. And remember, the primary purpose of rest and digest is digestion and excretion and elimination of waste, okay? So let's get to it, and I hope this like gives you an understanding. I, I know you have to get through nursing school, and I know memorization is necessary, but I really want you to understand why. So it's not like taking it in and dumping it on a test. I want you to remember it, all right? So I encourage you, if y'all see any of my videos, anything I can chart out for my students, I do a compare and contrast. So on this side, we're going to start with fight or flight, and I'm going to give you examples of like a situation. And these are not appropriate abbreviations. It's just easier to write it down on scratch paper before a test this way. So absolutely not appropriate abbreviations, but I'll explain what everything means. So I'm walking in my neighborhood and I see a dog. I don't play with dogs. If you ever been bit by a dog, I will run. I don't care if it's a chihuahua, I will go like my my stressor is that dog I am going to run so let's think about it I my pupils are going to dilate I'm in trouble I need more light to see what I'm doing so my pupils are going to go open up so more light comes in so I can for instance run my mouth is going to go dry I don't need a lot of saliva I don't need a lot of mucus that is especially to help with your digestive process so a decrease in saliva I don't need that right now my bronchioles are going to dilate. My respiratory rate is going to increase because I need to get oxygen in from the outside environment to perfuse the tissue so I can run, right? My heart is gonna beat faster to get that oxygen that I just got in from the outside environment to pump it to wherever I need it. Whatever disorder is going on, I'm running, so that blood is gonna be pumped, for instance, to my legs. What if it's a gunshot wound victim, right? That blood is going to be pumped to the vital organs because they've lost volume. So I want you to understand your bronchioles dilate, your increase in respiratory rate, your increase in heart rate and increase in blood pressure. And this is specific, I'm running from a dog. Not every acute disease follows this and I'll talk about that at the end. So I can get away. So oxygen can come in from the outside environment. It can be a perfused to the area of the body that needs it right now. All right, and let me kind of explain this a little better. Why blood pressure increases in fight or flight? This is your normal, for instance, artery, right? That's your normal vessel, and we know arteries take oxygen and transport it through our body. Well, in fight or flight, I want you to picture your arteries vasoconstrict. So the pressure here, and I'm gonna say this was my original artery line, now it's vasoconstricted. Won't the pressure go up inside of the vessel? right so that's what happens now I am running I need energy we need glucose for energy so the liver is going to release glucose our blood sugar is going to increase so we can run okay so increased blood sugar if you want to put BG for increased blood glucose whatever helps you remember best and I do not care about peeing and pooping right now I am running from a dog so my peristalsis this is decrease GI or decrease gastrointestinal and decrease GU, decrease genitourinary. I am, my peristalsis is gonna slow down. I'm not worried about pooping right now. I can potentially have urinary retention, and this is what kind of confuses students. 
I know, for instance, when you're scared like this, you can have an urgency to pee. Yes, that can happen in fight or flight, but I want you to understand the overall purpose. My purpose is to help my body perfuse oxygen because I am in trouble, right? I'm not worried about peeing and pooping right now. So I want you to think like those are decreased. That's not my concern in this system when it's triggered, all right? Now let's flip to the other side. When it comes to rest and digest, just like norepinephrine, especially in fight or flight, and epinephrine or neurotransmitters that stimulate acetylcholine, that's what I put the abbreviation for, ACH, inhibits, right? Your whole purpose for rest and digest is to digest and excrete waste, all right? We're not concerned about perfusing oxygen to a specific part in our body right now because we're in trouble, right? So the example, I just, ate dinner and I'm sitting on the couch watching TV. Fight or flight is not triggered. Parasympathetic nervous system kicks into play involuntary and my pupils constrict, PC, pupil constriction. I don't need light right now. There's no, I'm not reading. There's no like stressor that I gotta get away from. So my pupils constrict. Increase saliva, right? We want saliva. We want our digestive enzymes. So we want all those things that help us digest to kick in. So I have increased saliva. And instead of BC for bronchial constriction, I put bronchial narian. Because I, when I first created this chart years ago, I mean, I, I've been using this chart for oh easily over a decade. I put BC and my students were like, oh shoot, bronchoconstriction. They're having a bronchospasm. No, in rest and digest, you're not having like a bronchospasm or bronchoconstriction, but your airways, this BN stands for bronchial narrowing, they do narrow because in rest and digest, you are to conserve energy, right? You're to reduce the workload on your lungs and your heart. So your bronchioles are going to narrow. Your respiratory rate is going to decrease. Your heart rate is going to decrease. Your blood pressure is going to decrease or instead of constriction over here, that blood vessel that looks like this is now going to open up. We're going to have vasodilation of the blood, blood vessels causing a decrease in pressure because we are trying to reduce workload to the lungs and heart right now. Instead of glucose being released, bile will be released to aid in digestion. And aid in, uh, aid in digestion. And again, this is your primary purpose of this system. I want to digest, so peristalsis is increased, and I want to eliminate, right? So we're eliminating with pee and poop. We have to eliminate toxins from our body through pee and poop. So increase in gastrointestinal, increase in genitourinary. So increase urinary production, all right? so. I'm gonna show you how this will help you when it comes to disease processes, okay? So first off, the key is to know your chart and understand it. Again, always go back to what is the purpose? To help when your body is stressed. There's many types of stressors that can occur, but to help when your body's stressed and the parasympathetic to aid in digestion and elimination of waste, right? So let me explain how this will help you better understand acute illnesses. I am going to say chronic illnesses. Remember I told you how this doesn't match this perfect um, pathway every single time, especially with chronic illnesses. But let, let me give you an example. You are caring for a patient who has had an asthma attack, right? So asthma, a trigger, what happens? What symptom would change here? They cannot have bronchial dilation, right? Your disease or your disease process is an asthma attack. There's a trigger and now they've had a response and their air is what? Constrict. So they have bronchial constriction. But everything else mimics. Your respiratory rate, their respiratory rate is still going to go up because they're trying to get oxygen into their body. Their airway is in trouble. Their heart rate's going to pump faster. Their blood vessels are going to constrict. We're, they're not concerned about peeing and pooping right now. So it still mimics it for acute disease processes. You just got to change the, the primary hallmark symptom. So what about a gunshot wound? What about a gunshot wound? So I'm going to change this back to normal. What about a gunshot wound? So your emergency department nurse caring for a patient admitted to the ED who has a gunshot wound, right? What is the issue? So trauma has now caused a... 
uh, uh, um, loss of volume to the ex external environment, right? They're losing blood. So what symptom would change? You're losing volume with a gunshot wound. So therefore, flight or fight, your blood pressure cannot be increased. They're losing volume. That is the 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 trigger, the the cause, the this is what's going on in their body. Y'all, my earring just fell out. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't mind that. So blood pressure will go down, but every other symptom should be occurring, right? If they are, again, chronic illnesses are a little different, but their bronchial should dilate to try to bring more oxygen in. Their respiratory rate should increase to try to bring more oxygen in. Their heart is going to pump faster because they've lost volume. They're just trying to perfuse whatever they can throughout the body with whatever volume they have, right? And then they need energy. Glucose is increased. And it, they're not worried about peeing and pooping if they are losing blood to the outside environment. So peristalsis traditionally decreases urinary retention because they're just trying to hold on to that volume that they're losing to the outside environment because of that trauma. So decreased genitourinary. So it you just have to think about what is the hallmark symptom, but when somebody's in trouble, fight or flight should kick in, right? We do have diff different stages, right? In the initial alarm stage and things like that, I'm not gonna go into that, but in your body is a wonderful coping me mechanism. And if it still has the ability to fight and cope, these symptoms should occur, all right? So I hope this helps y'all. There's always a different way to approach things. If this doesn't help you, find a way that does. I just truly want y'all to understand the why so you can retain and hold on to it and ultimately help those patients you will care for one day. So as always, if this helped you, please help somebody else. Take care.